Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. Today I am so excited to be sharing with you guys everything I went through in my second trimester of pregnancy. Second trimester, if I'm not mistaken, goes from 15 weeks to 26 weeks of pregnancy and I am currently 32 weeks pregnant. So I am well out of my second trimester and I have a lot to share with you guys. I feel like my second trimester went by so incredibly fast. Like I can't believe I'm already towards the end of my pregnancy. It's honestly gone by super, super quick. During my second trimester, I was traveling Australia in a van with my toddler and my husband, and we did a full lap of Australia. I feel like because I was traveling during my second trimester, that's a part of the reason why it went by so fast because I wasn't like solely focusing on the baby I was growing. My head was like in so many places at once and I was just keeping busy. Also, because this is my second baby, um, I have a toddler to take care of and she is a busy girl and she keeps me on my toes. So because I have her to take care of, I am not really focused on baby number two because I just don't have time to focus on baby number two. Now that I'm back home in Canada and I already moved into my house, I started to get the nursery ready and my daughter's room done and everything's kind of just like falling into place. Now I'm starting to get impatient and every single day I'm just like, oh, when do I get to meet this little bean? So I'm starting to get really excited and that positive, anxious feeling back. Okay, without further ado, let's start talking about everything I went through in my second trimester because I have a lot to share with you guys. The first thing that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is all about my symptoms that I went through during my second trimester of pregnancy. Second trimester was honestly so enjoyable. A lot of those like negative symptoms that you had in the first trimester go away and you're not like big where you're uncomfortable and sore. So it just makes for like a really enjoyable time. My nausea completely went away. Like during my first trimester for both of my pregnancies that I went through, I was so incredibly nauseous, like throwing up three to five times a day. And as soon as I reached that like 16 week mark, it just completely goes away. Like I was not nauseous at all during my travels. I think I only like got nauseous twice and threw up twice. So to only throw up twice your whole second trimester, I count that as a plus. I count that as like pretty damn good. So nausea went away. So happy about that. The only time that I really got nauseous and this is something that like I've experienced in both of my pregnancies through the whole pregnancy is when I brush my teeth. I don't know what it is about toothpaste, but every time I brush my teeth, I kind of like get like a ups upset stomach. So I have to use like a very like light fragranced toothpaste. I always use the brand Tom's because it just is like a very natural toothpaste. It doesn't have like a strong taste or a strong smell. That tends to settle my stomach a little bit more. Another thing that improved in my second trimester is that I was no longer feeling fatigued all the time. I had lots and lots of energy during my travels. I did lots of hiking and lots of swimming. I was able to like go snorkeling for like hours on end and not even be phased. I went on super hard hikes while sometimes carrying a toddler my husband mainly carried her and i carried this little one but yeah i just had so much energy and we were busy every single day waking up early and we were always on the go 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 and i never felt tired or like i was overdoing it i felt great something that i have yet to kind of experience is cravings I have never been one to like feel like I've had cravings in a pregnancy. With my first daughter and with this pregnancy, I wouldn't say I've had like any weird cravings. Um, there's things that I've wanted, like when we were in Australia and they didn't have a lot of the things that Canada has. So like I was excited to come home and have like Tim Hortons Timbits, but I don't think I would count it as a craving because it wasn't like this like need to have it. My mom describes pregnancy cravings as like this like need, like you need it now and you'll do anything to get it. 
um, she always like needed carrots when she was pregnant with us and like if she didn't have her carrots she like she needed her carrots so I definitely haven't had anything like that but I was definitely like excited to come home and make a Thanksgiving dinner because when we were in Australia we missed Thanksgiving and I kept thinking about Thanksgiving dinner. I was like, oh, it would be really good to go home and make a Thanksgiving dinner, make a turkey, make mashed potatoes, make carrots and cheese sauce and all that kind of stuff. So I really wanted like a Thanksgiving dinner. But again, I don't know if that was a craving or if it was just like me being like, oh, I can't believe I missed Thanksgiving and I want to go home and make Thanksgiving dinner. So I don't know. Like, leave a comment down below like when you guys get pregnancy cravings if you if you've ever experienced pregnancy cravings is it just like kind of like a, a want for it or is it like this like need for it <laughs> because maybe I could count that as a craving or maybe not I also wanted pie like Andy mentioned pie when we were in Australia and I was like oh I could really go for like a homemade blueberry pie or homemade apple pie so I think maybe like that could have been a craving, but again, it wasn't like this like, I need it now. <laughs> I wasn't like a beast, so I'm not sure. Something my body has been going through that's been like super annoying is the amount of times I have to go to the bathroom. This has like been an ongoing thing in my first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester. It never eases up. I constantly have to urinate all the freaking time. And when I was living out of the van in Australia, it made it really difficult because we didn't have a bathroom in the van. So I was constantly pulling over and like dropping a squat wherever I could because I had to constantly pee. I had to pee so bad that I couldn't make it to the outhouse. Like I had to literally open the door to the van, hop out and pee. Otherwise I wouldn't make it. Like, so not only did I have to pee more often, the urgency of when I had to go also increased. Like I feel like, I don't know if like my muscles aren't strong enough or something, but I can't like hold in a pee that well. Like if I have to go, I have to go and I have to go now. So I would like wake up really early before anyone else in the caravan park and just be right outside of the caravan park because I just couldn't hold it. It was really, really bad. Another pregnancy symptom that I have is I get like really swollen veins in the down below region which is super unflattering and kind of like get insecure about too um, but I talked to my doctor and I guess that's normal but yeah I think just because like your stomach is growing and there's a lot of pressure in your pelvis and everything is just kind of like swollen and all of the veins down there are like dark and bulgy and are you guys going through that? Because every time I like look down there, I'm like, oh God, that, that doesn't look too good. <laughs> but I know from my first pregnancy that it does go away after because when it happened with my daughter and I was like, is this my new vagina? <laughs> because this is really not looking too hot. And I talked to my doctor about it. He's like, it's gonna go away. Sure enough, it did. So I know it's gonna go away. So <laughs> I don't have to like learn to love myself. I can hate it for now, knowing that things will improve down, down below. <laughs> Another pregnancy symptom that I experienced in the second trimester especially was increased hunger. I am not the kind of girl that eats three times a day, but during my second trimester, I had to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they had to be like a decent sized meal. And that's just something that I've never been big on. Like I've always usually only ate like one or two meals a day, which is not healthy, I don't advise that. But I've never like gotten hungry in the morning. So I used to like never eat breakfast or never eat lunch. And during the second trimester, I could not miss a meal. Every single day I woke up and had to eat like a big breakfast, like eggs and bacon or sausages and toast and tons of fruit and I ate lots in the morning. I feel like one, it was because I needed the extra calories, but also like I was just so busy during the day and my body was exerting itself so much and getting so much exercise that I think I just needed like more food to like fuel myself and get me set up for the day. Um, so yeah, increased hunger. And if I didn't feed myself or I went 
too long in between my meals, I definitely started to get sick. It was a couple times where we would be driving and I would just like suddenly feel really sick and really weak and nauseous and stuff. So we'd have to pull over and Andy would like leave the van and find me whatever he could to eat. Like he would go into a mall and like find me something or he'd go into a gas station or a grocery store. And like I would just need to get something in my body to make myself feel better. Something that is different in this pregnancy than my first pregnancy is to do with my boobs. Um, I remember with my first pregnancy, my boobs right away got like really sore and tender to the touch. And with this pregnancy, I've like experienced like no discomfort in my chest. I think it's because my boobs, like because I breastfeeded my daughter for so long, my boobs are just like used to growing and stretching and expanding and stuff. And they haven't got tender this time at all. There's been like no pain. And I feel like also, my boobs haven't like increased in size with my daughter when i was pregnant i feel like my boobs were just like massive and i then had my daughter and i breastfeeded so then they were even more massive and just like engorged all the time and full of milk and during this pregnancy um i was breastfeeding throughout my whole first trimester and by second trimester, I actually like lost my milk supply. I think my body was just like really dehydrated. I wasn't drinking enough fluids and my body stopped producing milk because I think my body was just trying to re reserve all of the fluids for myself and for baby number two. So I lost my milk supply and that obviously made my boobs a lot smaller because they weren't filled with milk anymore. So yeah, now my boobs are just kind of like in that saggy phase, which, which is great. I mean, love your body. <laughs> um, I am happy that I got a break from breastfeeding. Like breastfeeding for me, like I, I loved breastfeeding my daughter. It definitely built us like a very strong connection and I loved it. And I'm definitely gonna breastfeed my second child but it just takes a lot out of you and a lot out of your day. And it's something that your husband can't help with. So I just felt like it really drained me emotionally as much as I did love it. So I wasn't too upset when I lost my milk supply and I'm happy that I got like a bit of a break and some me time again, where these babies only belong to me and me only, and I don't have a child sucking on them all the time. But in just a couple weeks, I'm gonna be back breastfeeding and I'm definitely not looking forward to the cracked nipples again and the engorgement and the leaking nipples and all of that kind of stuff that comes with breastfeeding. I'm hoping that because it's my second time breastfeeding that my nipples are trained and they're tough and they're like sandpaper and that they don't have to go through the cracked stage and bleeding stage <laughs> but I don't know if that, if that happens. So let me know in the comments below when you guys had your second baby and had to breastfeed again, were your nipples like more trained or was it just like the first time where they go through all of the pain and bleeding and dryness and all that kind of stuff? Another thing that is different with this pregnancy than with my first pregnancy is that I feel like my belly has just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger more quickly. With my first pregnancy, I remember being like really self-conscious of how small I was. Like I was always worried that the baby wasn't growing enough and everyone was like, you seem so small, like is your baby growing? Like what did the doctor say? And I just like had a lot of anxiety that I wasn't huge. And with this go around, <laughs> I feel like I am pretty big. I have a pretty big tummy and I feel like it happened really quickly. Like as soon as I hit second trimester, I was like popping and I had a bump. And when I went out to town, everyone's like, oh, congratulations, you're pregnant. Whereas with my first, with my daughter, I was in my like third trimester and people were still at that stage where they're like, is she pregnant or is she not pregnant? You know, like when somebody doesn't really want to like acknowledge your stomach just in case you're not pregnant. That was like with my first, but with this pregnancy, people have had no problem. They're like, we know you're pregnant. You are pregnant, congratulations, girl. So yeah, I feel like my stomach is just boop. All right, the final symptom that I want to talk about is fetal movements. And this is like the most exciting thing I feel like that happens in the second trimester. 
I have always like been able to feel baby move really early on with both my first pregnancy and with this pregnancy. I want to say I was like 16 weeks and started to feel that like fluttering and this go around I feel like I was only like 16 weeks when I actually felt like little kicks and they're definitely like very subtle and very gentle but I definitely felt them really early on and I feel like um, if you're just like very like conscious about your body and very in tune with your body then you're more likely to feel those movements and it's just so magical by 20 weeks is when I actually like felt pretty strong kicking to the point where if my husband put his hands on my belly he could feel it too so yeah it's just it's such a magical time when you can actually feel them moving around and it makes the pregnancy just like feel more more real you know all right the next topic i'm going to be talking about is products that i feel like help during your second trimester of pregnancy first make sure you always have a water bottle on you stay hydrated um that's something i really struggle with to be honest i don't drink enough fluids and my skin has been so dry my hair has been dry and brittle and lots of split ends this go around i have not had the pregnancy glow at all i was also like in the sun during my travels for like two months just like a lizard absorbing all of those sun rays so i feel like that's why i haven't had pregnancy glow because sun affects you so negatively but also just because you have to drink a lot of water you have to drink enough water for yourself stay hydrated for the baby so always have a water bottle with you take your prenatal with you um that's something that i did pretty good in actually thanks to my husband he is in charge of my prenatal vitamin every single day he delivers me my prenatal and he doesn't leave until i take it so shout out to him for forcing me to take my prenatal because if it wasn't for him, I would not take it. I just, my memory, it's not a habit. You have to get in those like healthy habits, which I struggle with. Yeah. Am I the only one? Probably not. Um, maternity clothes. I feel like you don't need to buy too much maternity clothes, honestly. Maternity clothes are very expensive and you can only wear them throughout your pregnancy. So try not to buy too much maternity clothes. That being said, there are some things I feel like you need, such as jeans, like these babies right here. Um, it's like impossible to wear jeans that aren't maternity. Like your jeans aren't gonna fit you, girl. I actually put a pair of my old jeans on today just to see I was not helpful and yeah like there was not a chance they were doing up like not even in the slightest so if you like to wear jeans you're probably gonna have to invest in a one or two pairs don't go crazy one or two pairs of maternity jeans but other than that just wear leggings and sweats and loose things skirt my favorite thing to wear when I'm pregnancy is dresses and skirts because you don't have to get those maternity. I've been wearing the same dresses and the same skirts that I have had before my pregnancy and I think that just makes more sense. Like instead of having to replace your whole wardrobe and spend a crazy amount of money, just buy one or two items, buy your jeans. Other than that, wear sweats, wear skirts, wear dresses, wear loose tops. This top I'm wearing right now, like I'm 30 two weeks pregnant, this is not a maternity top. It's just a top that is flowy and loose. Not maternity. I've had this top literally since grade nine. It's been around for a long time. Um, so yeah, don't don't go spend all your money on, uh, on clothes, my girl, because there's gonna be lots of other things that you have to spend your money on. Um, pregnancy pillow. I feel like in your second trimester, you don't need it yet. Like. When I was traveling Australia, we were sleeping on like a mattress that was like this thin and I was comfortable. Like I was able to lay left side, right side, pretty much straight down on my stomach. I wasn't uncomfortable at all in my second trimester. So I wouldn't say that you need a pregnancy pillow yet. 
but third trimester, you're gonna need the pregnancy pillow. So if you're gonna be buying a pregnancy pillow anyway in your third trimester, you may as well get it for your second trimester. Honestly, you can never have that pregnancy pillow early enough because I love the pregnancy pillow even when I'm not pregnant. So if you don't have a pregnancy pillow, I'd start thinking of thinking about getting one because you're gonna need it eventually. <laughs> this is my pregnancy pillow. This is my pride and joy. I love it. Um, it's by the brand Letco. I don't know, never heard of that, but it's amazing. It's super comfortable. You can also use it for like a nursing pillow after baby's born. And I use this thing when I'm not pregnant, you guys. I just love this pillow. <laughs> but it's actually a must for your third trimester. Like I could not sleep without this during my third trimester. So get this baby right there. Um, the next product that I swear by, that I really, really recommend is this baby right here. This is a belly butter by the brand Rocky Mountain House and I swear by this guys, I use this like it's not looking too hot right now because I like lather this on my body. I use this every day, multiple times a day. It's amazing for everything. I put it on my face, which I, I don't know if that's good, but like I said, I've been so dry. so. When I'm feeling really dry, I put this on my face before bed. I put this on my lips. If you have chapped lips, which I've been getting, I lather this on my lips. I put it on my boobs because my boobs are the only place that I actually got stretch marks with my first pregnancy. It's like underneath when my boobs grew, um, I got stretch marks. So I put it under my boobs and I put it all around my stomach. And I even put it kind of like on the pubic area. I just like lather this everywhere, you guys. It's so thick and so rich and it's amazing. And it's it's all natural and it works wonders. I didn't get any stretch marks on my stomach. I don't know if that's because of this product or if it's just because of genetics. I have heard that like stretch, stretch marks can be genetic. I don't know if that's true but it's what a lot of people say. So maybe that's why I didn't get stretch marks or maybe it's because I have this super amazing product that I use all the time to help hydrate my skin and help my skin stretch. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is gender. Oh my goodness. The second trimester is when you can find out the gender of your baby. How exciting. Um, yeah, so around 20 weeks at your 20 week ultrasound, around that time, you can find out the gender of your baby. Is it gonna be a baby girl? Is it gonna be a baby boy? And we still don't know because we're keeping ours a surprise. Um, we went to the 20 week ultrasound and we were planning on doing a gender reveal. So they gave us an envelope that was sealed and they had the gender inside. And what our plan was is to take that envelope to Australia with us and do some kind of awesome gender reveal, whether we took it to like a cupcake shop and gave them the envelope and told them to put the pink or blue in the cupcake and then we eat the cupcake. We are gonna do something. But we left the envelope in Canada by accident. So when we got to Australia and we realized we left the envelope, we're like, by the time we get back, we're already gonna be in the third trimester. So we may as well, if we, if we lasted that long without knowing the gender and without like buying clothes for a girl or buying clothes for a boy, we may as well just keep it a surprise and go the full way. So that's what we decided to do. So I'm actually so excited to not know the gender this time. I never thought that I would keep it a surprise. I always thought that I would wanna know, but I'm really happy that this is the way the cards played out. There's like a couple people that I know that also kept it a surprise and they thought it was like such a magical time. You're in the delivery room and you have no idea and then baby's born and it's like, it's a girl or it's a boy. So I'm really excited to have that moment. So yeah, that leads in to the next thing I'm gonna talk about, which is our names that we're choosing. So because we don't know the gender, we have chosen a name for both a girl or a boy. We've already made our decision, which is I think something to be thankful for. I feel like 
A lot of people struggle, like a lot of couples struggle with choosing a name for their kid because it's such a big decision and people just have different tastes. So my husband is Lebanese and all of like the names he's suggested are like things that I can't even pronounce. I'm like, okay, this is the one thing, this, this is it. I'm not gonna name my kid something that I can't pronounce myself. So yeah, I, I can't even think of an example, but there's so many Lebanese names that I cannot say. And that's my boundary. I'm like, I'm not naming something that I can't pronounce. So we kind of like struggle picking names together because he would love to have like an Arabic name and I'm not really for most of them. So, um, but luckily we agreed on both a girl name and a boy name and I'm so excited. I'm in love with the names. The boy name is something that we've had picked out for a really long time. And the girl name is something we had picked out when we had my daughter. We were like, if we don't name her Aletheia, then we'll probably name her this. So we've kind of had that name picked out for a while too. Um, I'll give you guys a little hint. It starts with an A for both a girl or a boy because my name is Allie, my husband's name is Andy, our daughter's name is Alethea. So we're keeping with the theme of A's and we'll probably for all of our kids pick a name that starts with A. All right, well, we're kind of getting towards the end of the video. I do wanna show you guys a bump update. So I'm gonna do that now. Let's show off the baby bump. This is the baby bump at 32 weeks. So yeah, I'm out of the second trimester, but here's the bump, nice and round. Belly button has popped out and I'm feeling huge. Got my maternity jeans on. Yeah, so there's the bump. I'm feeling big, I'm feeling uncomfortable and I can't wait to be recording my third trimester video because third trimester is a whole other journey and it's difficult. It's, you, you go from being so comfortable and having so much energy and feeling so great and then you enter third trimester and it starts to go downhill again. Um, lack of energy, just constantly feeling uncomfortable and huge and having a hard time sleeping and all, all of that fun stuff. So stay tuned for the third trimester video. It will be coming up in a couple more weeks time. I'll probably record that closer to like 37 weeks or something closer to when baby is due. So yeah, stay tuned. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was very helpful for you if you are entering your second trimester and have questions. Um, if you have any questions that I didn't cover, leave them down below in the comments and I will get back to every comment. Yeah, thank you guys again and we will see you in the next video.